My name is Tavros Tavropoulos. I'm director of endoscopy at Winthrop University Hospital in Mineola, New York. Uh, I will discuss our, st our recent study of high yield of same session EUS guided liver biopsy by 19 gauge FNA needle in patients undergoing EUS to exclude biliary obstruction. Uh, I would like to take a moment to thank uh, my collaborators in uh, this study and in particular our um, fellow who has recently graduated, uh, Dr. G. Nim. Uh, without his dedication, this study would uh, have not been possible. Uh, the motivation for the study was that the, the gold standard of obtaining tissue from the liver, the percutaneous liver biopsy, uh, is lacking. Uh, this is a technique that hasn't changed much since 1923, and it involves uh, blindly, or at least even if ultrasound is used intermittently blindly, putting a needle that is 14 or 16 gauge into a patient's liver with uh, essentially no sedation to obtain a core of liver. Uh, there is uh, space for improvement there, and that's um, the, the, the nature of the technique and also the significant risk of severe complications has resulted in many gastroenterologists moving away from this technique. So a better technique would be uh, uh, of significant value. Right. There are two novel aspects of our study. One was the uh, needle that we used for the AUS guided sampling of the liver. Uh, the few prior small studies have used the 19 gauge true cut needle for AUS which uh, was actually designed to attempt to get tissue. We used a 19-gauge FNA needle, which uh, was designed to be used uh, for um, obtaining cytologic specimen, not cores of tissue. Why did we do that? Um, I, my experience going back several years has been that when used for tumors that have consistency similar to liver, such as lymphomas or hepatocellular cancer uh, or liver metastasis, I would get substantially more tissue using the 19 gauge FNA needle with suction applied than using the, the true cut quick core EUS needle with which I have uh, a large amount of experience. The other novel aspect, uh, and that's why we selected to do, use the 19 gauge needle for our study. The other novel aspect of our study, which aimed to address criticism of the previous liver biopsy studies using the true cut needle, is the issue of cost effectiveness. How could a US guide biopsy beat the standard liver biopsy in terms of cost effectiveness when it involves endoscopy, anesthesia, and uh, you know the fees associated with the endoscopy? To address this, we selected the patient population that was required EUS in any case, and in whom, if a negative EUS uh, was uh, found in terms of explaining their liver function, uh, um, their liver test elevations, the next step would have been a liver biopsy. We just rolled the liver biopsy into the endoscopic ultrasound procedure that we're already having in order to rule out biliary obstruction as the cause of the liver function test elevations, including uh, the differential for that would have been an ampullary tumor, papillary stenosis, unsuspected chronic uh, lithiasis of the bowel duct, or uh, even an inflammatory stricture for chronic pancreatitis. Uh, there has been an evolution of the technique during the study, which we have addressed on our manuscript, uh, as we got better at uh, assessing the gross adequacy of the specimen, and as we appreciated the safety of the technique, we felt the need to do two passes in the majority of the patients towards the latter part of the study, and that's probably the result um, of our previous experience with the only two patients in the study having inadequate results um, occurring in the first five patients we did. So basically the way the technique works is we do a pass through the stomach wall and the, and the capsule of the liver, targeting 
the left lobe of the liver and avoiding the left hepatic vein, which is usually in the center of that lobe. And then we perform little to and fro motions, which according to standard DUS nomenclature are not considered passes. And we do at least, uh, I'd say 15 to 20. Uh, don't be alarmed if uh, blood is seen in the, we do this under suction, if uh, blood is, um, is seen to collect in the suction syringe. Initially, that was an issue of concern to us, but the liver is generally a very vascular organ. Uh, it's important to avoid any vessel seen uh, on EUS, but uh, blood is uh, actually a sign that a sufficient amount of tissue is obtained. And uh, we, we would see often like uh, one, two, three cc's of blood collecting into the syringe. The next step is also important. We extrude the specimen onto slides and then I take the time to actually separate a grossly evident tan cores of liverparenchyma and place them in a formalin bottle, excluding obvious liquid blood and blood clot. Even, even in the beginning of the study, we are also uh, uh, on, on preliminary patients, uh, before initiation of the study, we consider using thrombolytic or fibrinolytic chemicals uh, to attempt to make the process easier. Uh, these were not successful, so basically mechanical separation is what works best and a few minutes can be taken to do that. A pathologist um, tells us that that's not really required because on the final pellet they can distinguish easily the liver parenchyma for blood, but uh, since they can only do limited numbers of slices for examination, I think it results in a much better sample if uh, you enrich the specimen in terms of uh, liver parenchyma. Yeah. In terms of future directions here, uh, I would uh, the first thing I would envision is a randomized trial comparing uh, this protocol of um, EUS followed by EUS liver biopsy if the EUS is negative on one arm with the standard approach of having the patient if the EUS is negative then follow with a separate session, liver biopsy, by whatever uh, standard approach um, is decided for that patient. This would allow us to examine important issues such as patient satisfaction. Anecdotally, two patients in our series had had uh, standard percutaneous biopsies uh, several years before, and they were ecstatic about the ability to have a repeat liver biopsy while being sedated with no discomfort um, afterwards and no uh, percutaneous um, puncture causing pain or discomfort, which happens in a significant portion of percutaneous patients. But this obviously has to be studied formally. So patient satisfaction would be an important issue to look at. And then uh, complications, we feel that the real-time high-resolution uh, imaging guidance that the U.S. offers uh, allow you to avoid even tiny bile ductules and vessels, and this may translate um, in uh, a lower rate of significant complications. And finally, it will allow a formal cost analysis, uh, because when all is said and done, given the complications that can occur with the alternative techniques, given that some practitioners use sedation, even with a uh, percutaneous or um, uh, transjugular techniques, the cost differential may not be as high as uh, imagined. Obviously, a large number of patients will be required for that. Yeah, yeah. Another avenue of research opened by the U.S. guided liver biopsy technique involves the ability to sample on the same procedure uh, diff easily different areas of the liver. For example, with the U.S. guidance, the left lobe, the caudate, and the central or posterior right lobe. This would allow us to test uh, something that has been theorized by various authors in the field, which is that biopsies from different parts of the liver may give um, varying histology, as for example, uh, in the grading and staging of, hepa of chronic hepatitis C. In conclusion, our study demonstrates that the U.S. guided liver biopsy by 19 gauge FNA needle is safe. It provides an excellent diagnostic yield comparable to traditional percutaneous and transjugular methods. Furthermore, when applied to patients undergoing a U.S. 
to exclude biliary obstruction, it's potentially cost-effective, clinically efficient, and could expand the role of the endosonographer in the diagnosis of benign liver disease.